Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and if you see the social media pictures, memes online about extroverts, extroverts suck. Yeah, according to the memes out there, extroverts, they're terrible people. They're all those annoying keywords you can think of when talking about a person crammed into one. They're loud, they're obnoxious, they're superficial, they're shallow, they like small talk, you know. They like all those things that no genuine person in the human world likes, you know. So the extrovert has become the subject of a lot of stereotypes and a lot of bias. You know, our channel was all about racing against bias and racing against the social media norms and memes online and showing people how things really work. So what I'm going to show you in this video is four types of extroverts. Yeah, there are four types of extroverts, each one with one quality that is a little annoying but also a little awesome at the same time. And no extrovert has all the other personality traits. No extrovert is all the extroverted stereotypes crammed into one. No, the extrovert is a person that can be interested in multiple different things and can be pulled in multiple different directions. So what are this, these four different extroverted subtypes? First, what you got is the extroverted intuitive. That's essentially the dreamer. This one is uh, the least associated with the extroversion. They're a little bit crazy, they like new ideas, they always have something new they want to do, they're focused on what's next, they're always thinking up something new they could do, they're always focused on what could be and what we could try and what could happen and what could be so interesting that's just around the corner, you know, this great change that would make everything so much better. Then you have the extroverted sensing type. An extroverted sensing type, that's the social, that's the person who has all these friends, you know, they're friends with everyone, they know everyone, they've been everywhere, they went to every party, they uh, did every single thing a person could humanly do, you know, during those uh, 24 hours we're supposed to have every day. So, then we have the extroverted thinking type. The extroverted thinking type, that's the dominant and pushy one. They always got a new project, a new idea they want to see through. And they're very much about getting things their way. They know how to get their way. They know how to push. They know how to fight. They know how to challenge others. They're competitive and they like to get ahead. Finally, you have the extroverted feeling type. And this is the agreeable type, you know, the one that... Uh, always wants to get along with people, that always wants to make people happy, the one that uh, always wants to inspire, the person that's basically like a hero, you know, an adventurer, the person that's always up to good, that always wants to do the right thing, that always wants to be nice and helpful and supportive of other people. So, these are four extroverted sub variations and if you would put all these traits together the person you see would definitely be very annoying imagine somebody that was both pushy crazy social and passionate at the same time basically what you're thinking of is a steamroller basically what you're thinking of is uh, like a flood of water that cr crushes through cities, you know, destroys everything in its path, throws everything up on its end, you know, uh, changes everything at the same time. But no person is like that. No extrovert is all these things at once. And that, that also explains why no person relates fully to the extroverted stereotype. You know, the extroverted intuitive feels, no, I'm not extroverted at all, I'm introverted, you know, because they see themselves daydreaming, thinking things up, spotting new things. And you know, they, they don't really enjoy the moment. They feel often that, no, the moment is too much. You know, they, it's much more fun, you know, to think about what's next. You know, they get somewhere, but they can never really enjoy it because they're always thinking about what they want to do after that. And then I want to get home and then I want to try that. And, you know, when I'm there, I want to do this, you know. So they're always thinking about and dreaming of and getting stimulation from thinking about what's next. Then you have uh, the extroverted sensing type, and they're always feeling like, no, no, I'm so easygoing, I'm not that on, I'm not that pushy, you know, I'm very friendly, I'm very social, everybody likes me, I'm a little bit of everything, you know. 
uh, the extroverted sensor, they can be like quite a chameleon, you know, because they mimic and mirror the body language and energy of other people. You know, when they meet somebody quiet, they also become a little more quiet. And when they meet somebody who is very cheerful, they also become very cheerful, you know. And they, they mirror others and they send energy in return, you know. They make everyone around them a little bit higher in energy. They raise the vibration of everyone in the group, you know, to get spiritual. Uh then you have the extroverted thinking type, but, you know, they always feel like, no, 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 it's not about, you know, necessarily the group or what other people think. I don't, I'm not that influenced by other people, you know, I'm not, uh, I have very strong opinions, I have a very strong, you know, idea of what I want to do, you know, I don't just go with the flow, I always have my own thing I want to do. I have very strong willpower, I have very strong views, I'm very pushy, you know, if I want something, I'll get it, you know. And finally, you have the extroverted feeler, and they're like, they're coming from the perspective of, you know, what's good to be, you know. It's not about, you know, um, being extroverted or introverted, it's about, it's about doing the right thing, you know. So, it's about being a good person genuinely it has nothing to do with whether you're introverted or extroverted or not but i'm just trying to be a good person i'm just trying to do the right thing i'm just trying to help i'm just trying to be nice you know i'm just trying to do something good for society or for people or for my family i'm just trying to cheer people up you know yeah people think i'm this cheery person and this energetic person but i'm really just trying to help you know i'm just trying to make things better i'm just trying to make you laugh so a lot of these extroverts, they come from this perspective of I'm misunderstood. I'm misunderstood. I'm very misunderstood. People don't get me, you know. People think, you know, I'm this person when I'm really not. So what a lot of extroverts are working towards is that finding themselves, you know. Who am I? You know. When you're an extrovert, you're very focused on the external world and external reality of what things are and what they could be and what could happen around you. Often the focus is on your friends, your family members, what other people think about you, it's uh, what society does, it's the system, it's the power dynamics, it's who's in charge, it's what people are pushing you towards, it's what people are doing to you, it's what they say behind your back, you know, it's all those things that the extrovert can focus on and think about quite vividly often. These experiences are quite vivid and hard to ignore for the extroverted type, you know. They have to relate to it somehow, but they're not directly guided by it. They know what energies other people are sending out, they know when people are trying to pick a fight with them, they know when people are nice to them, they know when people are happy, they know when people are sad, you know, they know when people are have a lot of energy, they know when people don't. So the extrovert is very much responsive to what's happening around them and to the, what's happening in the external world. So the extrovert is always working towards, you know, developing and dealing with their inner sense of self. You know, often what can happen is when uh, you're so focused on these energies, these outer external energies, you struggle to listen to your own inner voice. You know, what do I think? What do I believe? What do I think is right? Do I, what do I think is wrong? What do I care about? What's important to me? You know, often it can be that... Uh, Extroverted sensor gets swept up in the crowd and in the shares and in the party and in all that's happening around them, you know. Just like the intuitive gets swept up in all the new ideas and uh, then I go there and then I go there and then I go there. And then it comes to the point where you start wondering, like, where am I really going, you know. What are my energies? What's the difference between my energy and the group? What is the difference between my ideas and uh, what's happening around me? Do I have a plan? Do I, am I going somewhere? Like, why am I doing this? All of this. Why is, why is all of this happening? So, what you're really realizing as an extrovert is, yeah, essentially everything extroverted that you do, ever, is about combating anxiety, you know? Every one of us, we have to deal with anxiety. And extroverts have to deal with anxiety their own way. You know, as soon as an extrovert gets anxious, their first reaction is to do something, you know. The introvert, they go, I need to think about this, why am I so upset? You know, they pull back, they retreat. The extrovert is like, I have to do something. I have to meet people, go out, chat with people. Or maybe I have to start up a new project or start drawing a little bit or start 
uh, going somewhere new or sh make some changes in my life or try something new. Or maybe I have to go out and help somebody or go out and do something nice and uh, meet somebody or make somebody happy or do something positive. Or maybe I need to be more pushy and strong and stand up for myself more. Or maybe I need to f like uh, stand up to my boss or maybe I need to do something I haven't done yet see through a project or complete something or go to the gym you know I, there's something we have to do to deal with our anxieties inside us that we all have we all have to struggle with so the base idea is if i just extrovert a little bit more i will become calm and i won't have any anxieties anymore but often um, if these uh, strategies fail to resolve the anxiety it can make the pursuit even more extreme you end up pushing yourself even harder you end up holding on even tighter to those things that make you calm you start making more drastic changes in your life you start with small changes that doesn't work you doesn't doesn't deal with or make the anxiety go away so you have to make a very big change or oh uh, uh you're not happy with the friendship circles you have so you have to make new friends so you have to go out and do somewhere else or have even more fun or go to an even bigger party you know there's a problem in when these strategies fail to resolve and deal with the source of the anxiety because the source of the anxiety could be either extroverted or introverted you know it can come from the external world or from the internal world it can be that you have shitty friends or it can be that there's something inside of you that you need to deal with or confront so essentially you're eventually put in the position where you have to confront the inner world and there's the questions like why am i doing what i'm doing there is the question of, uh, you know, what am I running away from? Or there's the question of, uh, essentially, who am I? Or it's the question of, what do I know? And uh, these four things, they represent, you know, those challenges of the inferior or of our inner three-year-olds you know everyone has a mature version of themselves you know whoever they are right now the most mature form that they have currently actualized in themselves and then they have uh, the three-year-old version of themselves it's the extroverted intuitive when they decide to run away from their past and from their history and their family and you know all those things they have like their job and everything because they feel trapped it's the extroverted sensor when they decide to ignore their better higher wisdom and their judgment about a situation and to do something they know is stupid and they know is thoughtless and they know is not gonna work because they can actually think things through theoretically and they can actually see the consequences of their behavior it's the extroverted thinker when they decide to basically forget who they are or to ignore their base morals and uh, what they know is right and wrong uh, and when they end up acting like true douchebags you know just to get what they want and finally it's the extroverted feeler when they decide to ignore their better judgment you know of uh, what's actually smart and what's actually reasonable and when they decide to throw all logic out of the window and throw a scene or to um, scream or just do something just to get attention. So when you don't confront the inner world, the inner world can throw a fit on you and on everyone else around you. That's often what we tend to see, you know, the inferior is the result of a three year old slash out or creaming or screaming or crying, you know. So it happens when you re re stop listening to yourself. But the inner world can also, besides providing an area of regression or total complete regression to your basic uh, primi most primitive version of yourself, the inner world can also act as the higher self, you know, the higher judgment and the higher awareness and the higher wisdom. So often it can be that while you're avoiding essentially the inner world, the inner world is always there as a kind of higher guidance or some kind of spiritual version of our own world, you know. We tend to perceive some parts of the introverted functions as spiritual 
we as intro, uh, as extroverts, some aspects of introversion are very spiritual experiences, uh, almost divine experiences. They're like guiding forces inside of us. Like you have uh, as an extroverted feeling type, you have introverted feeling as this kind of compass that's like, but you know this is the right thing to do, right? But you should try this. You know you'll be happier if you make this change. It's that idea of that thing you're striving towards. You know, you have the most mature version of yourself, current, your current actualized state of self, and that's extroverted. That's always going to be extroverted. The dominant function is the actualized conscious version of yourself. And everything you've done up to this point and all the experiences you've had and everything you've done and tried and said and felt. Then introversion acts as the regressive three-year-old or the aspiring or potential version of yourself you know what you could reach you know that uh, divine wisdom that extorted intuition essentially essentially aspires towards you know the wisdom of life or that uh, divine self that extorted feeling strives towards that inner harmony that they seek or that uh, perfect world that extroverted thinkers seek towards you know where everything is great and everything is running smoothly and everything is exactly as it should be or for the extroverted sensor it's that safe and secure space that's always gonna be there that you know will always last you know that secure foundation that you built eventually that's always gonna be there to protect you and to keep you safe and the Will always that ground foundation that you can never, no matter what you do, that will always be there. So you have this uh, divine experience of introversion as an extrovert, and you have that regressive version of introversion as an extrovert that you have to deal with. And they're both aspects of the same coin. If you just flip the sides, that's where they are. So what you need to do is. Uh, constantly flip this coin and notice that these two versions exist that regressive version of yourself and that higher version of yourself and then you, what you gotta do is you gotta affirm yourself you know i told you extroversion is all about dealing with anxiety and finding stability and finding peace of mind and you know an aspect of life that is very difficult is that we always have to do something to make the world a better place or to make our lives better it sucks, but it's true. You cannot just wish your way to happiness. You cannot just hope that happiness will come to you, that you will find friends, that friends will randomly end up around you, that uh, experiences will randomly come to you, that uh, new things will essentially just happen out of nowhere, and that you will find yourself in new magical places just randomly. You will just teleport there and end up there no, often the problem is you have to do something actively, constantly to make your life a better thing, you know. You're never set fully, you're never completely done, you're never, you're never gonna hit that point where you're gonna, everything is gonna be completely perfect forever and you never have to do anything anymore. A problem of living is you have to keep living to keep being happy, you have to keep doing things to keep having flow, you have to keep trying new things to keep moving forward. The experiences you've had, they give satisfaction, they give energy, they give peace of mind, but only up to a point. And after you stop doing things, that happiness, that satisfaction, that peace of mind eventually starts to become more like a boring, tedious, and uh, pff, yeah, sure, that's nice. I love to do that. Yeah. Essentially, the satisfaction we feel from it just keeps declining. It ke keeps getting worse. So, let's rehearse. What are the four versions of extroverts? First, the extroverted sensors, essentially the socials, the shatters, the people that like to make noise, the people that like to do things, that like to seek information of about the physical world using the five senses they like to see things touch things hear things taste things smell things they like to experience things in the moment then you have uh, for example the extrovert intuitives and they're like uh, focused on what could be what i could do what could happen what i could try out they're 
focused on intellectual conversations, daydreaming, thinking about new things, you know, different places, you know, oh, I could do this, I could do that. It's what could be, it's transformation of the world around you, it's turning things into something else or finding something new. It's novelty seeking, it's learning. Then extroverted feelers, they're the people that are focused on, you know, what is good and what is bad and what's moral and what's immoral, what's the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing to do, what should I do, what should I not do, you know. They're, they're the focused on, uh, you know, living a life in tune with their values. They want the world around them to mirror their values, to spread and to create the kind of world that they feel is the right kind of world around them to bring to their friends and family and the people they care about, their values and the things they care about, to shape the world according to what they think is right and beautiful and good and bad. Then you have the extroverted thinkers and they're focused on the productive results, pragmatic, they're data oriented, what's right, what's wrong, what do the numbers say, what are the statistics, have we followed up on this, who's following up on this, who's doing that. Are you doing that? Are you doing it well enough? How many results have you got? Why have you not gotten more results? Is there anything you could do to get things done faster? Are you effective? Are you doing things well? Could you do things better? They're business-like and competitive. You know, I could do more than that. If you give me the chance, I'll do better. I can, yeah, that person might be able to do that, but I can do more. I can do a little bit more, you know. And the four extroverts, they basically show different attitudes to life, you know, completely different styles of consciousness, interests, morals, values, identities. They dress differently, they talk differently, they look differently, they care about different things, they have different conversations, they act differently. And yeah, if you would cram them all into one single type, that type would suck because that person would be so annoying. But since they are all different types, different kinds of extroverts, they're all quite nice actually. On their own, they're all quite nice, you know. Extroverted thinkers, they get things done, you know. Extroverted sensors, they always spread positive energies around them, you know. Extroverted intuitives, they show you what could be. They make you dream, you know. They make you see bigger things. And extroverted feelers, you know, they become positive examples and champions and heroes almost, you know, like they. They set a positive example, they show what you could aspire to, how, what you could do, what you could be, what kind of person you could become. So my question to you guys is, what type of extrovert are you? Leave a comment down below, let me know what type of extrovert are you and which kind of extrovert do you like the best? Yeah, which kind of extrovert do you like the best? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below.